Oh, and we're good to go. So I'm very happy to introduce at EMF Camp um, yeah, the Tim Project, making a relay computer out of scrap, and uh, Rory Mangles. So big, big welcome. So. Hello. So first things first, my campsite is right next to the bar, so unfortunately, I might be a little bit more rusty than I would usually be. Um, but uh, yeah, this is the Tim Project. This is the story of um, kind of how I learned about computing. Um, so back in 2010, um, I was about to start my uh, GCSEs. Well, I just, just finished my GCSE, started to start my A-levels, and um, I hadn't really decided what course I wanted to do, but electronics looked interesting. Never done it at, uni at, at GCSE level or anything before, um, so had a look at that. First module was on logic gates and various things. I was like, oh, that's interesting. I don't know how those work, but I'll, because I haven't done any of the uh, electronics before, I'll uh, do some research before, we, before I actually go, and, go on the course. And so I started looking at, um, started looking on YouTube for, you know, videos on how logic gates work and, you know, just general information. There was a really good YouTube video on uh, how to make a half adder out of transistors. And I said, like, ooh, what's a half adder? That sounds exciting. Or it does to me. Um, and uh, so I, you know, rummaged around the shed and uh, wanted to make a, see if I could make anything out of uh, make a half adder out of everything. And the only electronics, or really electrics, that I'd done previously, and I played around with a couple of uh, relays a couple of years ago previously just to uh, you know, make some little circuit or something. It probably didn't work anyway. Um, but I had relays, and they're really difficult to blow up. So I was like, OK, we'll, we'll play with some relays, you know, make, make a couple of circuits out of that. So I set about making this uh, circuit that's up on the screen. Um, it's really not the simplest way of making a half adder, it turned out, but I didn't know that at the time. It was only this way of doing it because it was all done in transistors. Relays are much easier to use, it turns out. Um, so yeah, I uh, sold together some relays and um, I, obviously I'm assuming everyone knows what relays are, but if you don't, they're electromagnetic switches that are um, powered by a little coil in there that just splits the switch. and uh, just at the bottom there, showing an AND gate. So you turn the two A and B lines on, and it sends a signal to the output. Um, it's closed based switches. It's fairly straightforward to uh, concept, to, uh, which is why I was using them, because they're really easy, as I say. Um, so yeah, I got hold of a couple of relays, sold them together to make a couple of uh, logic gates, and then sold those together to make uh, what became TIM1. So this is... Um, the very first bit of computer logic I ever made. It took me an afternoon, and I was very pleased myself. You know, I added a one and a zero, or a zero and a one, or a one and a one, and uh, it gave outputs on those old motorbike lights that I had lying around. And it was very poorly wired, and it was, you know, um, pretty basic and much more complicated than it needed to be. But it was really exciting to me because, you know, I didn't know how any of this worked before, and then I, you know, thrown together some parts, and I had something that was doing maths. Um, really basic maths, but it was really, you know, for a 16-year-old me, it was very exciting. And uh, yeah, I had added a bit, one bit of memory in there that uh, uh, just held a light on when, you, when it was turned on. Very simple, but you know, I had a, had a computer with memory. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> it was all good fun. So, I then made TIM2, which was basically the same thing, but with another bit of memory. TIM3, I took the whole thing apart and uh, rebuilt it, found a proper power supply, found a little box, um, and made a little three-bit full adder, really going up in the world. Um, so I, at this point, I'd realized that circuit design for an adder was a terrible, terrible idea, and redesigned it. And that whole of the previous circuit uh, was condensed down to about four relays rather than uh, 10 or so that was there. And that allowed me to put together a whole load of extra bits and uh, make full adders instead, uh, which meant I could now add up to 16. Um, you know, almost use it in my, in my exams, but uh, not quite. So 
Uh, this was a, this was the point where it started getting vaguely serious. So I was like, okay, I, this, is, this is cool, but what if we go bigger? Um, so this was Tim Five. This was the monstrosity that was Tim Five. Um, basically, I got uh, Tim Four was a just a Tim Three with a bit added on to make it do uh, th up to four bits rather than three bits. Tim Five was Tim Four plus a load more memory and calculation uh, uh, sequencing circuits and stuff. So in the middle there, we've got two four-bit registers uh, which hold data as it's going through the computer. Uh, those are all made out of car relays. And the reason why this project is titled Making a Computer from Scrap is because I didn't buy anything for this. This was all found crap around the farm that was uh, around the uh, place that was uh, stolen stuff. So a lot of these are car relays, a lot of these are out of um, old cash machines that uh, were made at the farm. And uh, a lot of them are, uh, you know, like washing machine stuff and my, out of a microwave or whatever we could, I could find. And this lovely item was wired up pretty much. I put down a relay and then sold it up where it was. And it meant you uh, ended up with what you see there, which is... It, Amazingly, it worked, and there's a video online of it working. Um, it would, basically, it, was, it could count up so, and do multiplications. So you put in two numbers, and it would add the number another number to it repetitively to you know, basically multiply it. And it, could, it was four bits, so it could do you know, up to 32 um, in total with the carry bit. And um, yeah, you know, it, was, it worked, but I was like, right, kind of need to rebuild this because I can't move it because it's a pile of relays on a desk all loosely wired together. Um, so I built uh, Tim6, which was basically the same, same idea, but everything had been rewired. And just to give you an idea of the problems I was starting to get of not designing any of this beforehand, putting relays down, soldering them up. Um, on the right there, you can see the wiring on the underside, which is uh, not... The, you know, a, a wireman would scream in horror at that. It's all point-to-point -point rat nest wiring rather than any, you know, looming of data bus or anything. It's just, what's the shortest bit of wire I can use to avoid spending money on it? Um, so <laughs> it was, um, yeah, all, again, all found parts, which is why nothing quite matches. And um, you've got different car relays on the left and right doing the memory and then all sorts of mishmash of uh, stuff in the middle. Um, but yeah, so this, this thing kind of worked, but there was a fault in it. Uh, turned out one of the, after many, many months and while I was taking it apart again, turns out one of the capacitors in the top right was, had a dodgy cell joint, but I didn't know that at the time. But basically, the problem was I had no circuit diagram. And you know when you've written a bit of code and you didn't bother putting comments in, and then you come back and month, a couple of months later, it's like, I have no idea what any of this does. This was basically this whole project up to this point. Um, so I was like, right. I want to reboot, redo this properly, so I want to do. At this point, at this point, I still had a calculator, so it was it was just add numbers, but there was no program. It just kind of did what exactly what it was wired to do. So I was like, right, I'm pretty sure at this point I could make a full computer. This was about a year after. This is about a year later at this point. So I'd, I spent up to Tim Six was a couple of months of playing around with relays. I was like, right, I want to do a proper computer. Um, but I am going to have to do some proper circuit diagrams. So most people at this point would download some circuit diagram designing tool. I opened up Microsoft Paint. Um, don't do that for your circuit diagrams, but I didn't know any better at the time. As I say, this whole thing is a learning project in many ways, more ways than one, so I was kind of trying to learn computing, electronics, wiring, soldering, all at the same time. Um, so a lot of it kind of shows badly with that, but Things were working up to this point, so, you know. The other problem I had with building a whole computer is, like, I only have what I could find. I didn't want to buy any relays, because they just cost money, and I, at that point, didn't, you know, was, was still a school kid. I wasn't earning much money. So I was like, right, I'm not going to waste any money on relays. So I scrounged around as hard as I could, found around, managed to scrounge about 200 relays. So I was like, What's, what can I build out of that? So... I started designing things, and these are some of my beautiful paint arts that I drew up. Um, 
I still don't know why or how I managed to draw such nice diagrams and paint, but uh, as you can see there, basically the idea was uh, on the left was the first design, which is basically Tim 5 uh, with the four-bit uh, registers and a much bigger, more complicated arithmetic logic unit, the ALU in the middle, and that could do different things. And this huge multiplex at the bottom to get that, all those different uh, four-bit numbers down to one four-bit number and put that in another register. And then I was like, oh, four-bit, you know, I've got some spare relays, I could probably squeeze out to five-bit, but that makes the ALU even bigger. And at this point, you know, just a five-bit ALU is going to cost me like 40 relays, and then the multiplex at the bottom is going to be another 40. And I was using most of my relays. like, I don't really like this design. It's not a, it's not a neat way of doing things. So I came up with uh, a one-bit ALU, which could do, would actually only use 12 relays in the end, but I, I realized that if I switch through every single digit in the uh, register individually, and just have a little bit of memory that saves the, re the ALU state as it's going through, I can actually just uh, do a series ALU, so it does one bit, one bit at a time, does, so I, which has the benefit of A, less relays, but B, variable bit width, so I could then you know, have, a, have it 4-bit, have it 8-bit, have it 32-bit if I wanted to, if I had that many relays. Um, so at this point, I was like, all right, well, that's just saved me a ton of relays. Let's go 8-bit. So I uh, designed this thing to uh, be a full 8-bit Turing-complete computer, and as you do out of 200 relays, um, the whole thing runs on punch tape. So the main problem with relays is trying to get memory. Um, memory is expensive in terms of every bit is at least two relays, and you have to have multiple registers of 8-bit wide, and you don't really want to do that. So to store the program, I made this punch tape stuff. So we had a lot of receipt printers around, and I hacked one up to be a tape reader, and then I hacked another one to print punch tape. So what it has is a load of LEDs and photodiodes that, uh, as this tape's going through it, reads the tape off it, uh, it reads the program off it. And instead of most computers where you'd run the paper tape into the memory and then run it from memory, this one runs directly off the paper tape. You can see down the side here there's a clock pulse um, that clocks the relays as it's going through. So this meant I could have infinitely long programs in my Turing complete computers. I could do whatever crazy things I wanted to do with it. But um, obviously I still had to build it at this point. So I designed this great thing and I was like, all these plans say, like, never am I ever going to get this built. But Let's go, let's try. So I, I built these, so first I built the ALU just to check the, obviously the one bit ALU idea works. It was great, it worked for, you know, with a bit of tweaking, with a bit of debugging, it worked exactly as I planned. So I was like, that's cool, let's, you know, add some registers to that. So that made the ALU unit. Then I was like, oh, I've got to work out how to control this thing. Um, so I had to basically hard code, I, I came up with an instruction set. Um, which I could then, which is as simple as possible to implement. So uh, there's eight bits on the punch tape. First four bits are the address for that instruction, and the uh, second four bits are the instruction itself. And these were entirely designed to be as simple as possible to code, code, encode into a relay computer just using the wiring. So I was like, right, I've designed this, this instruction set. I've got to try and wire this in hardwire this design of instruction set into the relays. So I managed to get that bit working. And at, that, at this point, I um, had to get the tape reader working. And that took me a very, very long time because it kept, some, the, the, for some reason, the uh, photo transistors kept dying. And I was like, you know, I was used to relays, which they don't die for anything. And I was like, oh, stupid modern te technology, you know, being really difficult to use. Um, and uh, Turns out the earth lead had fallen off my soldering iron, so it was frying it all with like 240 volts every time I was putting it through. Um, obviously very low current, so and I, the way I picked this up is because I was like, right, I'm going to do you know, full anti-static, and have the mats down, have the wristband on. When I was soldering something up and touching the other end of the wire, I was like, ow, ow, ow. It's like, that's, that's not ideal. Why is, why is that getting what feels like mains volt? Oh. So uh, <laughs> after I fixed that, the tape really worked. Um, so that was that problem fixed. Um, at this point, again, it was just a pile of relays on the table, so I had to come up with some way of moving it around. So uh, I was like, right, well, nice, you know, I want, want to be able to see it all so, ha and have it all fold up. So if I put the, you know, get a nice big plastic set of plastic seats, a couple of hinges, I can put the 
Logic unit at the bottom, that's the biggest, heaviest bit. That's nice and, you know, ballast. Uh, put the control section on the side, that'll go there. Uh, registers go down the other side, it's quite neat. And then, uh, yeah, tape reader goes in the back. Nice split out front, perfect. Um, so that's kind of how this thing came about. Um, the whole thing is, uh, oh, crap, go back one. Um, uh, not used to uh, using uh, this on Google Drive. There you go. So, yeah, good. So, essentially, this computer runs on Harvard architecture, which is the idea of it runs off the paper tape rather than on the computer memory itself. Um, so it has a separate store for me uh, program and uh, data. Um, the computer has five registers, uh, one working register, and um, four down the side as the uh, general, work, uh, general use storage registers. And then I came up with um, a way of doing a really basic memory type using capacitors and diodes. Um, so I've got 16 bit, uh, 12 bytes of uh, capacitor diode RAM. And uh, yeah, the whole thing in the end used 160 relays, um, had a full 8 hertz clock, clock rate, and uh, full 16 bytes of memory if you include the registers. So they're blistering speeds and not quite running crisis yet, but uh, the, uh, um, yeah, amazingly, after I've wired it all together and spent forever debugging this, and I mean forever, um, it's still my beautiful rat nested wiring. I didn't learn anything on that was fun at this point. Um, still trying to use as little wiring as possible. There's probably several thousand solar joints in there, all badly done by 16 year old me. Um, and uh, none of it's insulated. All of it runs on 12 volts, fortunately, for everyone's sake. Um, it draws, consumes about five, watts, five amps of power when it's up to full, full chat. And um, can do basic addition entirely. <laughs> Entirely worth it. But the whole point of the project was, you know, I just came, found, found an idea of, you know, I realized I could build computers out of relays. I was like, okay, what's the logical extreme of doing this with what I've got? And um, yeah, so what we end up with was Tim, was, uh, Tim Aid. Um, by the way, the name Tim, um, I just had to pick a name, and Tim was a good name. So there's, it, it was, I, I pretended it was an acronym for a while. I was like, no. No, it's just, I just picked a name at random, pretty much. But yeah, I end up with, uh, so Tim 8 is the kind of culmination of the two years that that was that, was that project. Um, and I took it around various uh, places doing talks. Um, it turns out, when you have some, a whole computer made out of relays in a really nice clear box that opens out on the table with all the different chunks, it's actually a really good way of teaching computer hardware. Because one of the problems is, these days, or at least in my opinion, is that Everyone learns software these days, or at least everyone here probably learns software. Uh, you know, how to write programs and, you know, how to do Python and all the rest of it. But how does the computer work? You know, you give out kids Raspberry Pis and all the rest of it. And it's like, right, there's this magic black box. If you put uh, code in, it's, you know, it does these magic things. So how does it work? Don't know. It has millions of transistors to do crazy things. Okay, do you have a picture of it? No, no one has a picture of it. Um, whereas this thing, you know, you can open up, say, there's the registers, they're about this big, you can see them. There's the ALU, the logic unit, it does number things. There's the control secretary, there's the program on a punch tape that's reading through it. Here's all these flashing LEDs that you can see the program stepping through at eight hertz, rather than bang and it's done. So, I mean, this was, although this was a learning, a learning tool for myself, it's actually been quite a good educational tool, um, having taken it around a few schools, and, you know, just showing this is what, how computers work. And, um, yeah, it's been, not the most reliable piece of kit, as you can imagine, but, um, and in a minute, I'll, I'm hoping to demonstrate it and it's, we'll see whether it survived the trip from the car to my tent and then the tent to here, but, uh, yeah, I was, I thought we covered that. Um, just going back on the, the, quick on the program, um, I made a program called The Basic Language of Tim, or BLT, which is a nice sandwich. Um, again, my naming schemes are entirely arbitrary. Um, you can see here on the right the, uh, the instruction set that I wrote for it. So um, you've got basic, you've got eight different logic uh, uh, processes. You've got addition and then a load of simpler ones. Um, you've got all the addresses at the bottom left for all the different registers. You can load to, load from. Uh, looping on a punch tape is interesting. 
Um, instead of like a normal program where you can just jump, um, this is the kind of more traditional Turing machine style of um, when it sees a loop command, it has to rewind the tape until it sees a start loop command, and then it runs it forwards again. If statements are similar, so you have, um, if it sees an if statement, it just stops, it keeps running the tape, but it stops executing commands until it gets to an end if, and then it'll start executing commands again, unless that statement isn't true, in which case it'll just run as usual. So there's a lot of interesting working around on the punch tape there, but I think it's technically Turing complete. Turing complete is quite a difficult definition of all the different things the computer has to be able to do. Um, but I think with conditional branching, aka the if statements, and looping, um, it can do it. It can kind of do nested loops. Obviously, being able to loop within a loop is difficult. I did kind of implement that, but yeah, it's a lot of things in this computer kind of work. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, the basic, I mean, I did actually write a program in the end that could do uh, full simultaneous equations that uh, for sol yeah, solve simultaneous equations using matrix algebra, um, which was about 10 meters long. I never printed it. I wrote, I wrote for the sake of myself writing programs, I wrote an um, assembly language in the simulator so I could run it all on the computer first before printing it out, because debugging on paper tape is a nightmare. Um, so I, I wrote some ridiculous programs for this thing. Probably the most complicated program that I've managed to actually run is the Fibonacci sequence, which is a lot simpler. Um, but uh, recently I added, uh, basically, I, 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 Tim had been sat under my bed for the last five years, having really done anything with it. Um, but recently I hauled it out, blew the dust off it, and uh, fixed it up. Because basically there's this fairly terminal pro problem of somewhere buried deep, deep within the wiring, one of the relays had died. And it was one of the important logic unit relays. And I found which one it was many years ago but just never managed to work out how to get it out. So, I was like, and I, various over the years, I was like, right, I'm gonna do this now. No, it's way too much effort. Um, so this, this is another, there's, right, I'm gonna do it. Plug it in, turn on, the relay stuff working again. So I was like, right, run with it, it's fine. Um, so, on the, uh, so I got, I got it all working again, mostly. Um, it's to the point you could run programs at least. And I was like, right, the one thing that always really annoyed me about this is you'd run a program and you'd have nothing to show for it, except for the lights at the front. I always really wanted a printer, so I tried designing my own printer and all the rest of that, and it didn't really work, as you can imagine. So it's like, but these days it's like, right, I know a bit more about electronics and stuff, having now done my degree in electronics and by uh, going away and you know spending many more years doing electronics after this. Um, so how you know, I, I kind of know a bit better about protocols, and turns out printer parallel ports are about the simplest possible program protocol you can use. So I stuck a parallel port on it and wired that in, and it can now print with the tape, with the tape reader. So uh, I plugged it into the same tape reader it does with this. Um, the text is very small because the default text in that is a uh, pretty tiny font, but uh, technically I can plug this into any printer and it'll print out. So you can use it like a uh, teletype terminal, it's great, um, in theory, if you know your ASCII codes and are good with switches. Um, but uh, keyboard's next on the list. Um, but basically this, this then allowed me to uh, Write the program that you know everyone everyone always does when they first do it. It's now going to can do hello world on a relay computer, which was very satisfying. So uh, yeah, we'll uh, give it a try. I can't promise anything, but um, unfortunately the tape reader has got a little bit worn out, so it's it's a bit sluggish on actually reading the program because the program the cl the clock speed is set by the the motor and the grip on the roller in the tape reader, so uh, it's not. It's not the most reliable setup, but uh, we'll see if it works. So, power on switch in the front. Uh, we've got the five registers at the front here, which um, uh, that's the working register at the bottom and the four uh, main registers. The nice big rotary switch on the side for selecting which you write to. You've got all the switches at the bottom that uh, give you the option of manually writing data to the registers. And um, yeah, currently we've got uh, the Hello World program ready to go. So I'll uh, boot it up and. See if it will go. LEDs in the front should start lighting up if it works. I'll manually feed it. It's fine. So that was hopefully printed out Hello World. Um, well, it printed out Hello World twice, but that's close enough. Um, <laughs> it's,
it kind of survived the night in the tent, but um, I'll just open it up just so you guys can uh, have a better look inside. Um, if anyone wants to ask any questions while I'm doing that, then uh, go ahead. I've uh, ran out of slides, so that's uh, me done for the day. Okay, cool. Um, so I've, I've got a question, actually. So how many hours in all do you reckon it take as you put into this? I have I no idea. Basically, it was a two-year project, pretty non-stop. Um, but the main, main bulk of that was designing the, or doing all the little circuit diagrams in paint. I say little, they're like several, hundred, almost tens of thousands of pixels across. Um, but the, the actual wiring for this particular model um, didn't take too long. I mean, each module took me, I mean, I, I, I remember, I, I recently Facebook Memories sent me a, a link to one of the pictures of this saying, just spend three days wiring this up solid. So I'm guessing it took me about three days to do the main logic unit. God knows how long it took to uh, actually debug that and get it working. Um, same with each unit. So basically it's very modular, so each unit was made separately. And um, it would, uh, oh, that's that side gone. Um, and then Every, each module was made, each module was debugged, and then they all had to kind of be wired together. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I can't actually hold this up, but uh, if after the talk you guys want to come have a look, I can power it up and, uh, on the desk and uh, show, you how, show it working and talk through some of the, bit, of the bits. The great thing about relays, you can just plug LEDs on any of it and it lights up and looks really pretty. And uh, also helps for debugging when you uh, can remember what all the LEDs do, which 90% of the time I can't, um, but uh, see if I can get it to run while open. No, not really, it can't pull the paper tape up. <laughs> I'll have a fiddle, see if I can get it to work, but uh, so yeah, if anyone come, wants to have, come up and have a look, it's uh, more than welcome to. Yeah. Does anyone have any other questions? Oh, we've got one over here. Yeah, there we go. A um, bit of a random question. Have you ever set Tim up on a table on a train just to see what people's reactions would be? <laughs> I, did, I did consider um, taking it into my GCSE, uh, final GCSE exam when I had, the, had Tim 6. Um, unfortunately, I, th I think I was told not, I couldn't because the noise would be distracting. But uh, there was the, the general idea was to uh, get it to a point where I could run um, programs on it. Um, with. It doesn't really transport very well, although it is 12 volts, and I have considered making it battery powered. Um, but uh, it's not really a PC. Um, <laughs> I've always wanted to try and get it to, uh, you know, I've always joked about the fact it could run Windows um, if it had enough memory and time. But now I've got a, a, a terminal. I'm, you could so, almost write an operating system for it, but I'm not quite sure how, how much you could actually do with it and how awfully slow it would be. It'd be interesting if it did run Windows, how long would it take to boot? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, there's not very much light in here, so I'll uh, try and get some, try and get some uh, data in the relay.